The Staffordshire Bull Terrier is a fascinating breed, a breed that's near and dear to my heart. And we have to always understand where a breed comes from and its history and origins if we want to know how best to train it and raise it to be the perfect companion we've always wanted. So in today's video, I'm gonna hand you over to one of my breed history experts who's gonna break down the fascinating history of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, ideally in under five minutes. In 19th century England, where many of our breed stories begin, so-called blood sports were all the rage. Considered the height of entertainment, particularly amongst the working classes, these blood sports involved the use of animals in forced combat situations. Bull baiting is perhaps the most famous of these and involved pitting a tenacious and broad skulled dog, typically the now extinct Old English Bulldog type, a distant precursor to the modern snub-nosed sweetie of an English Bulldog we know today against a fully grown bull that outweighed the dog by at least 30 times on average. To even things out, the bull was tethered to the ground, and as such the dogs usually won the contest by latching onto the bull's face with its vice-like grip until the bull was felled. Such practices called for dogs that were muscular, relentless and quick, which may give some clue as to what staffies have to do with this awful story. Now, blood sports were obviously barbaric and not morally permissible in a developing society. And so, despite 200 years of tradition, all blood sports were banned in England in 1835, meaning that bull baiting quickly died a death. However, whilst bull baiting was impossible to carry on in private, as was bear baiting because bulls and bears and the arenas that they play host to them are anything but inconspicuous, one blood sport continued illegally in secret because it was easier to hide. That sport was dogfighting, and the Old English Bulldog was still alive and well there. However, this practice had no place for dogs of such mass, given that the opponents were other dogs, not giant animals, and as such needed to be fast. Therefore, smaller dogs, still imbued with the ferocity and indefatigability of terriers and bullies were needed. So, Smaller terrier types were often crossed with bulldogs for breeding more compact, rapid dog fighters. Elsewhere, above ground, other fanciers of the bulldog who wanted to retain the handsomeness of the bulldog that was at risk of extinction, but wanted a more docile companion dog without the trademark aggression, were also crossing remnants of the bulldog with terrier breeds. As such, a breed emerged simultaneously above and below ground or not so much a breed as a breeding trend or type. That type was known as the Bull and Terrier, later of course shortened to the Bull Terrier. Many dogs that combined some percentage of Bulldog and some percentage of Terrier were labelled as such, and the dogs took off in popularity, both in illegal and legal contexts. Whether the Staffy descends from the softer or harder lines of Bull and Terriers is unclear. The whole process is shrouded in mystery, and even modern DNA profiling cannot determine it for sure. And neither stud books nor breeding literature were kept prior to the invent of dog shows. What is likely, however, is that some unknown variety of the incipient bull and terrier was crossed again with another small terrier breed to give rise to the early Staffy. Because of its lingering association with blood sports, it was important to dissociate from this past by shrinking the new dog if it stood any chance of being accepted into society, and into dog shows. Despite these efforts, the broad skull and dense raft of muscle that hugged this new dog's skeleton were telltale signs of its history, and it took until the next century, in 1935, for the breed to gain kennel club recognition, and another few decades before the AKC accepted it. Despite its sordid and contentious past, the Staffy was quite popular in the show ring. The classic dichotomy for working dogs, whose working role either gets removed due to mechanisation or made illegal, is either death or reinvention. For the Staffy, we're thrilled to know it was the latter, reinvention. They followed the same path as the Rottweiler, the German Shepherd and the Doberman Pinscher, other than not being from Germany. Once in the show ring and in people's homes, softer and softer dogs were bred until the working instinct was mollified enough to make good family pets. And no dog can say this more proudly than the Staffy, who, from a past of bloody violence, has emerged as one of the very best family pets in the entire world. 
and what a ride it has been. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you love the Staffordshire Bull Terrier as much as I do, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like the video, because we can't wait to see you here on the next episode.